I'd like to talk about the actual skills that are rated in the speaking test. Because when you do the speaking test, one way to succeed is to, of course, give the examiner what they are looking for. And, of course, the important question is, what exactly is the examiner looking for? How do they decide on what is a high score or what is a low score in the IELTS? So, this video, I want to um, answer some of these questions. So, let's look at um, exactly what the examiner is looking for. And there are basically four areas. Here they are. Number one, fluency. Number two, vocabulary. Number three, grammar. And number four is pronunciation. So the examiner will give scores on all four of these areas. One, two, three, and four. Which means that actually you're, you're not getting one final score. You get four scores which are combined to give you the, the final score. Now, the point fives often um, refer to where there might be weaknesses. To get the high score, you do need to show strong ability in all of these, not just two or three. If you have a weakness, then it, you might be dropped down, which will result in a point five at, at the end. Okay, so... Let's look at all of these four areas in a little bit more detail. And of course, we're going to begin with um, fluency. So fluency is about how confident you are in speaking English, whether you feel comfortable or not in speaking English. The main um, area here is to think about your ability to keep going. If you can talk about subjects easily or with difficulty. So really the point to remember is that long answers are good, short answers are bad. Say as much as you can. Now it's also about using conversational phrases. Conversational phrases are how you manage and control the conversation. Um, it's important not to confuse the examiner by jumping around in a way that the examiner cannot follow where you are going. So you need to show clear connection from one idea to the next idea. And also, linking words are an important area here, because linking words like firstly, secondly, thirdly, finally, in addition, however, all those kind of things um, are important in showing a strong connection between ideas. Now, in this video, I'm, I just want to talk about how the speaking test is rated. I don't want to go into all of the details about exactly the, how to, what you need for these individual um, scores. Um, but when you think, if you want to improve on your score, these are some of the areas you need to think about. Okay, now the last thing is about fluency is the pauses, hesitations, and repetition. Now, this is a negative um, feature, if you like. At the beginning, I talked about the ability to keep going and that you should say as much as you can. Pauses, rep hesitations, and repetition refer to when you get stuck. And if possible, you don't want to get stuck. So here's an example. If you, um, uh, um, uh, um, are speaking, um, like that because your brain is trying to think of what to say, then that would be a weakness in fluency. One of the um, ways to consider and understand your fluency is to actually record yourself and listen to how you speak. Okay, let's look at number two now. Number two is vocabulary. 
So with vocabulary, the range of your vocabulary is important. And if you have a wider range, you're going to get a higher score. Now, um, a range refers to using interesting words and using idioms. And I'll give you a few examples of those in the next slide. Um, precise meaning is also another thing that will improve your score. Accuracy in vocabulary is another important um, area, and accuracy refers to whether the words you use are appropriate and whether they are accurate in terms of noun, verb or adjective form. So the noun, verb, adjective is quite close to um, the grammatical element of vocabulary there. OK, let's look at some examples of um, range to help you understand and see this. So here's um, some things with interesting words. So if I take this sentence, I was worried about my son's ex accident. Now you can see that that kind of vocabulary is pretty much every day. Most people, when they learn English, this is the kind of stuff that they learn fairly early on. But if you compare this sentence, I was distraught about my son's accident. Now, simply changing one word makes your sentence that much more interesting and will give you a higher score. In case you didn't know, distraught means very worried. Let's look at the idioms now. So this is an example of a standard sentence, I don't like cooking. And you can replace that with cooking is not my cup of tea. Now, idioms are things you can learn. Again, I don't want to go off into uh, teaching idioms in this video, but I certainly suggest that it, it, you can buy a, a book. There are many books about how to improve your um, idiomatic vocabulary in English, and they're well worth getting and learning so that you can use more idioms in your speaking interviews. Now, vocabulary is a real opportunity. So before I move on to number three, I would like to strongly suggest that you take an active and, and positive role in developing your vocabulary. Because if you develop your vocabulary, you will get a better score. So this is um, the opportunity. You, I've told you what to do, but the question is, how do you develop your vocabulary? And let's talk about this for a few minutes. So um, the first thing you need to do is you need to expose yourself to new vocabulary because it has to come from somewhere. You have to find that vocabulary and reading is the best way. Now, when I'm talking about reading, I mean that um, you don't have to read academic textbooks or anything, you can read books and magazines that are of interest to you. So if you're interested in, in cars, read something about cars. If you're interested in fashion, read about fashion. If you like Harry Potter, read a Harry Potter novel. The point here is to get exposure and to find new vocabulary. Once you're doing that, the next thing is to actually capture that new vocabulary. So you'll need to buy a notebook, go to the stationery store, buy a nice, simple, cheap notebook, and you have an exclusive place where you can write down all that new vocabulary that you find. Once you've um, written it down, of course, step three is to learn the vocabulary. Now, the first thing, you need to understand what the word means. So you'll need to look it up. You'll need to make sure that you know exactly um, how the word is used. And once you've done that, you've got to be able to use the word yourself. 
So here are some tips. It's not enough just to know the word, but to actually use it yourself. Um, the first thing you need to do is to review. Of course, we don't remember things the first time. We, in, if we want to remember a word and have it ready in our speech, you've got to look at that word again and again and again. So um, a daily or a weekly and a monthly review is very important. Again, all you have to do is open your vocabulary notebook and go through all of those words in your notebook and refresh your memory on what is in there. The second learning step is to simply test yourself. And this is very simple. All you need to do is get a piece of paper Write down as many of the vocabulary items that you have recorded. Then, once you've finished, you can open your vocabulary notebook and check back to see how many of the words you can remember. The third little learning strategy that's really important is to visualize the words. Now, our brain remembers images really easily and quickly. So if you can look at the new vocabulary and you can create a mental image that represents that word, you will almost instantaneously remember that vocabulary. If you're familiar with uh, memorization techniques, a lot of them do stress this idea of visualization and creating visual images. So go ahead and use that strategy and it will certainly improve your um, vocabulary, your ability to use vocabulary in a matter of seconds really. So that's some um, ideas and tips about improving your vocabulary. Let me just repeat that this is an opportunity and I do strongly suggest that you um, get into the habit of capturing and learning new vocabulary. This will not just improve your speaking, but of course it will also improve your writing skills. Okay, let's move on and let's look at um, number three. Number three, of course, is the G word, grammar. So, similar to vocabulary, you need to think about the range of grammatical structures that you use. And if you use a wide range of grammatical structures, you're going to get a higher score than if you use a limited range. What do I mean by um, a range? Well, we have complex sentences, sentences that include that and which and who, or maybe examples of this might be conditionals, the if I won, if I had known, all those kind of if sentences are examples. Also, the range of tenses. Now, as you probably know, English has a whole range of tenses to talk about past, present, and future time. If you can use as many of those, then that's going to be something that will improve your score. So the other thing, of course, is about your accuracy and the mistakes that you make. Now, with accuracy, there are two parts to that. Um, the first part is number of mistakes. And of course, if you make a small number of mistakes, then you're going to get a higher score. If you make a big number of mistakes, your score will be lower. The other part about mistakes is whether they are big or small. And another way of thinking about this is whether the mistakes are serious or not serious. A serious mistake is something that makes your statement confusing. A mistake that is not serious is something that really doesn't matter too much because your idea is clear enough. Now, grammar, of course, is something, again, that you can improve on, and all you need to do to improve your grammar is to go through some of those grammar practice activities that are available. Um, again, it's not part of this video, but you can. there are many, many books and resources available that you can buy to help you improve your grammar. 
If you're worried about it, then this is a bit of homework for you to work on your grammar skills. Now, let's um, talk about the final area, which is pronunciation. Now, with pronunciation, of course, in a speaking test, um, pronunciation is important. And at the end of the day, you can speak clearly or you cannot speak so clearly. Now, pronunciation goes into some of the more individual skills of pronunciation. So I'll just talk about these because the examiner is um, breaking it down into particular um, pronunciation skills. The first one is rhythm. So let's just demonstrate these is easier rather than talking about it. So here we have I live in Singapore, which is a regular kind of boring rhythm. A more natural rhythm here, I live in Singapore. So rhythm is often about how fast or how slow you speak. Now the next one is um, stress. And that is where you put the stress in words and sentences. So once again, I'll give you some examples of word stress and sentence stress. So here we have photographer. And the next example, photographer. Photographer, photographer. So you can hear that the stress is in different places in the word. The correct stress is photographer. And the point here is that if you can stress the word in the correct place, that's the kind of thing that will improve your score. Although both are clear, this is in the higher levels, really, where um, things like word stress is accurate. And that would be something that would be um, expected if you want to get a high score. If you're in the middle band, it doesn't matter so much. Now, we look at um, the sentence stress. So if we take the sentence, cooking is fun. Now, with sentence stress, you can stress different parts of the sentence to communicate different ideas. So here you could stress, cooking is fun. Or you could stress a different word. You could say, cooking is fun. And the word that you stress affects the meaning and your ideas. So you can use um, sentence stress to communicate ideas more effectively. And again, this would be an example of how to get a higher score with pronunciation. Now, another thing to think about is intonation. And intonation is related to your attitude or your mood about something. Now, in English, we have rising or falling intonation. So if I just demonstrate this um, with the sentence, cooking is fun, then you can um, sound positive using rising intonation. Cooking is fun, like that. Or if it's falling intonation, probably you'd be indicating a more negative attitude. So it'd be cooking isn't fun, like that. Now, the last one is the sounds of English. And English um, consists of a large collection of different sounds. And learners some found, find certain sounds a little bit difficult to pronounce. Here are some examples of sounds that can be tricky. So we have t versus s versus sh and r versus l, like that. There are lots more sounds of English, of course. These are some examples. Um, again, if you think you have a problem pronouncing certain sounds, then you need to practice and go through to see if you can improve your performance on those individual sounds. Okay, so there you have it. That is um, what the examiner is looking for. Number one, fluency. Number two, vocabulary. Number three, grammar. Number four, pronunciation.
So if you want to improve your um, performance in the speaking test, you need to look at these four areas that I've covered in the video and you need to do maybe some extra practice if you think you've got some weaknesses. That's the end of this video. Now move on to watch some of the other videos on the individual parts of the speaking test. Thank you.